So when we take communion, we're remembering the body of Jesus. Um, and it's important for us to remember. Uh, and it says in Jeremiah that we were that it was the Lord who knitted us together in our mother's womb. But when we talk about the body of Jesus, we're talking about a body that was made in heaven by God. Like it's not just like our body who. Um, when, when God named us humans, it's, it's to mean that we're made of the earth. Um, Jesus is, he was the only one to be made of heaven and earth. Um, so when we take communion and we're, we are recognizing heaven came down and made us right. Because like when, you, when, Adam, when Adam and Eve were created, God created them to be of heaven and earth because when he breathed life into them, it's, it says in, uh, that, that when he breathed life, that word breath, it's ruach, which is, the, which is really the Holy Spirit. It's to be made of something, two different things. Are you tracking with me right now? So when we take the blood and body of Jesus, we're not just recognizing human cells, we're recognizing God's cells. We're recognizing God's body broken for you and me. It's one thing to say, well, a human giving a life for another human. He was 100% human, but he was also 100% God. And so him being 100% God and 100% human, it means something really significant. And that meaning is that God looked at you and he looked at me and he said, yeah, I'll shed my blood for you. I'll, I'll, I'll get tortured for you. I'll break my body open for you. And, and so when we take communion, we're not just like, we're not just remembering something that happened 2,000 years ago. We're remembering the God who came down. There, every other God in our world, there is no other God who stoops there's no other God who gets down on his knees and gets at our level. Do you know that? Jesus is the only one who comes down, gets at our level, and then picks us up and takes us back up to a higher. It's just, it's amazing to me. It's like, why can I, how could I not follow Jesus when he's the one who came to me in my mess and he brought me up higher? It's amazing. Um, and so once you get the, open up the bread first. A little cracker. I just want you to close your eyes, just hold the bread with... Lord, we recognize that this bread, it represents something. It represents you. It represents the bread that came down from heaven. Lord, it represents your words, the manna from heaven. It represents sustenance. It represents growth. It represents your faithfulness to your people. And so, Lord, we, we hold this not out of Christian tradition, but out of a place of honor and remembrance as we walk into 2024. We remember, Lord, what you did to get us back. We remember how you adopted us. We remember how you sent your spirit through this body to our bodies to remind us that we were adopted into your family and that because of this body we have been born of God it says in first John that we've been born of God that because of your broken body we get to call ourselves sons and daughters of God and that when we are adopted you don't look at us 
as being out of the family. You look at us as holy, as righteous. So we thank you, Jesus, for your broken body, Lord, that you chose not your will, but for our benefit. You said, it's not my will, but your will, Father. And the Father was passionate about reconciling us. So Jesus, we thank you for yielding yourself, your body, unto death and unto resurrection, that we would be born of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's take the body together. And Jesus handed his disciples a cup and he said, this blood is the new covenant. It's God's covenant with man. What's, what's a covenant? It's a pact. It's a promise. It's, it's God saying, I will do this for you. And so by him shedding his blood, he rips open the fabric of just death, hell, destruction. He rips it wide apart and he makes a way. He makes a way for us to enter into his presence through his blood. He makes a way for us to remove ourselves from our transgressions, remove ourselves from our shame, from our guilt, from our condemnation, from our addictions, from false identities, from anxiety, from depression, from imposter syndrome, from you name it, this blood fixes it. And I would say if you think his blood cannot fix it, then you do not believe the full power of what this blood is. And I'm telling you, that's challenging for me. But I just, like, that's real. Can I, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot about me, us and our kids, but we talk to our kids a lot about Jesus. And we were talking to our kids about when the disciples got filled with the Holy Spirit, crazy stuff started happening. They started walking down pathways and their shadows started healing people. Their shadows. Paul started taking handkerchiefs where he couldn't go to other towns. He said, hey, I'm praying for this, this handkerchief. Take this handkerchief. <laughs> what in the world? And that started to heal people. You see, you see the, the disciples start operating at a, just a whole different level. And it's not just unto healing. It's not just unto miracles. It's, it's, it's unto Jesus receiving the reward of his suffering. Every single time someone gets free, it's unto his reward. Every time somebody gets healed, it's unto his reward for the reward of his suffering. That the lamb was slain, not just because it's a nice Christian thing, but because he actually wants to be involved with his creation. I, there's not very many people that I would die for. Just being honest. <laughs> There's just not. When I think about my kids, I would do anything for my kids. And when God sent his son, it was the defining factor in moment in history where all of heaven and earth pushed pause and time stopped. Do you know that? Like, that's why we say BC, before Christ. It's like all of time stopped right at Jesus because all of heaven and earth had to go hold up. Something's happening right now. God's about to shed his own blood for his own creation. Ah, I just love it. I love him for it. Okay, so we're gonna pray. 
I know I'm being preachy. Lord, your, your blood is powerful. I thank you, Lord. Your blood can do anything. It can set the captive free. It can make things white as snow. It can transform the lost and the broken. It can make secure the things that are insecure. And so, Lord, this moment, we recognize the shed blood of Jesus in this house and in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your shed blood. That you chose us even when we may have not chose you. You chose us. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you, King of kings, Lord of lords. Thank you for, for being a man of suffering. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us, for wearing a crown of thorns instead of a crown of gold. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Amen.